Hello, I don't know if you're enjoying this week, but I am. And if you're not, switch off now. If you are, stay with me. We're talking about words that we use in the Christian faith. Words that sometimes sound like Christian jargon. Words that we don't normally use in other parts of life. And we've talked about justification and sanctification and glorification. Today we're going to talk about the three O's. We're going to talk about the description of our God, the attributes of our God. And I want us to think about omniscience, omnipotence, and omnipresence. These are all very vital to understand if we're really to know our God. And they're marvelous words, but they're not the sort of thing that you'd put in an English essay if you were writing one for college or university. But when we begin to understand God, they mean an awful lot. Let's start off with omniscience. We find in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1, and again in John chapter 1 verse 1, it says, In the beginning, God. And when you say God, you're talking about someone who knows everything. And that's exactly what omniscience is. God knowing all things. Now, Malcolm Smith puts it like this, although he puts it far better than I can. He says, God knows everything. He always has known it. No one ever told him, and he knew it all instantly. Now, you can spend the rest of the day thinking about that one. But that is our God. And if you really analyze what I've just said to you, you know straight away that our God is in a different dimension. Man cannot do what I've just said. First of all, we don't know everything, and we know what we've been told. Sometimes the Spirit shows us something we didn't know in His own particular way, and gives us a word of knowledge. But that's special, and that's occasional. That is not the general run of life. But for God, constantly, He knows all things. He knows everything from the beginning to the end. He knows your life and mine from the beginning to the end. You say, just a minute, Richard, I haven't lived it. That doesn't faze God one bit. Because He is in that other dimension, and because He is eternal and infinite, He sees things from that totally different dimension outside time, looking into it. And that's why he can see the end from the beginning. Fascinating. You can think about that most of the day too. Now because he knows all things, when I put my life in his hand, and when I begin to rest and relax in that, and when I let him guide me and direct me and show me and live through me, my life begins to turn around. Because my God knows all things, and because he knows all things, he knows me totally and completely. And even though he knows me totally and completely, he still loves me. That blows my mind every time I think of it. He knows me through and through and loves me without end. You say, just a minute, how can he know me completely and still love me? I have no idea, but he does. He never stops loving any one of us. I know he doesn't always love what we do, but he always loves us. He always loves the individual. And it's a very fine line, but our God makes that separation. So he knows all about us. He knows what we did. He also knows what we would have done and what would have happened if we'd done that and not this. He knows all the possibilities. He knows what he can do in us and through us. He knows what we can become. And he knows what we will become. Well, this gets bigger and bigger, doesn't it? And you see, if you really analyze the omniscience of God, you begin to see the greatness of our God. And I've often said this to you, and I'll say it again. So many Christian believers have such a small God to worship. No wonder they have a struggle in their Christian life. Our God is so great. He's so much beyond. He's so fascinating. And once you really see that, I believe your life begins to change because your attitude to God begins to change. He knows all things and always has done and no one ever told him and he knew it all instantly. The second thing that I want to talk to you about is that he is omnipotent. Jesus puts it in a rather simple form to his disciples when just before he ascends to the Father he says, all authority 
in heaven and earth has been given to me. All power and authority belong to Jesus. Now, omnipotence means total power over all things. Our God has power over everything in this world. Well, you say, now, just a minute, Richard, that's a ridiculous statement. Why does he allow earthquakes? Why does he allow mountains to pour out lava that run through people's living room? Why does he allow all that goes on in the Middle East? Well, on and on we go with questions. Let's consider a couple of them. First of all, he's given man free will. And if you build a house at the foot of a mountain that erupts, you may reckon that sooner or later lava will flow through your living room. And I don't think you should blame God for that. If you allow man to do what he likes, he will fight. And in the Middle East, we see the Arabs are constantly fighting. They fight one another, and they fight other people. And God allows it. But also, I know in my heart that at any time he can stop it and wrap it up. And one day he will. And that's going to be a terrible day. Somehow, and for some reason, he just gives man free reign with his free will. And when he does, man does the most stupid things and the most terrible things to one another and has absolutely no concern for the other individual's life. All they want is what they want their way and they want it now. And if anyone gets in their way, they've just got to get out of it. Didn't we see that at Christmas with the Cabbage Patch dolls? Whether you bought one or not is beside the point. You see what man will do to man when he just wants what he wants. Well, God is still omnipotent. And as you listen to the news, as you read it in your newspaper, know that over all things stands God. And one day he will step into this world, and he will stop all things. And in that day, this age will end. I believe it will happen with the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I believe for those of us who know him, it will be the most wonderful, glorious, and exciting moment of our lives. And for those who don't, I think it will be the most awful, horrifying experience you could ever imagine. Indescribably bad. Because God will stop all things. He is omnipotent. And therefore, He can step in. And sometimes He does. And He works a miracle. He steps into the natural order and changes something turns it around, works his own will, just as he did in Mary, when in Mary conceived Jesus Christ, how? Totally, uniquely, with the omnipotence of God, his power. So his power is the greatest power in this world. There is no greater power exists, and God is in control of all things. He allows man to do things. You see, I believe in a permissive will of God, as well as a perfect will of God. If we had a perfect will of God flowing, there'd be no sin, there'd be no injustice, there'd be no killing, and on and on goes the list. But because in his wisdom he gave free will, he took that divine risk that when he gave free will, man would use it wrongly. And he has done. And he's blown situation after situation because he's done his thing and not God's thing. But God is still in control. And one day he will take up that power and he will reign forever and ever. There's one other side of God to get our three O's. And that is that he is omnipresent. He is everywhere present. You cannot go where God is not. Now that could be frightening. And it almost sounds like Big Brother is watching you. But then you've got to remember that God is love. So everything that he does and everything that he says and everything that happens through God happens in and through love. Perfect, total, complete love. Now, because that is true, you do not need to be afraid because God is omnipresent. He is everywhere present. That's exciting. Not fearful. That's exciting. You can't move out of your Father's presence wherever you go, whatever you're doing. You can fly, you can go into a submarine, you can go anywhere in the world. God is present there. Now, by the way, let me come back to what I just said. 
if you really understand and begin to appropriate what I've just said to you, you begin to see the greatness of our God. He's not just my God. He's God. God of all people. He's not always acknowledged. He's often ignored. Some don't even know about him. But he is God. Everywhere present. I can't go out of my father's hand. You see, David said this. He says, if I go up to heaven, thou art there. If I go down to Sheol, thou art there. You're everywhere. That's right. That's our God. And so, you're going through a day that's going to be a different experience. You've got to go here. You've got to go there. All right. Well, then you step out knowing that God goes with you. And he's going to be there. And even when you come to death, God will be there because he's omnipresent. I love it. You see, when a Christian believer dies, Jesus Christ, God, goes through that experience with them. And when they come to the other side of that experience, when they have actually died and in the spirit move into his presence, he's there to greet them. That's our God. And you see, he's so much greater than us. He's so much more wonderful. And what we try to do in our generation, we try to make man as great as God. I heard one young minister say one day, God needs us. Oh dear, how far from the truth. God doesn't need us. He has chosen to need us. It was purely his side of the bargain. We need him. He loves us to fellowship with him. And that's why he created us. He created us for love. He created us for fellowship. He enjoys people. But he doesn't need us. God is totally self-sufficient. God is totally made up of himself. But by choice he includes mankind. God is omnipresent. I hope you'll get hold of these three words. He is all-knowing. He is everywhere present. He is total and complete power. That's our God. And if nothing else happens today, I pray that every one of you listening to my voice will begin to see again, and maybe as you've never seen before, how great our God really is. We are worshipping the God of all things. It's interesting, isn't it? In Colossians chapter 1, it says of Jesus, in him all things consist. That's our God. Everything flows out of him. And he's still in control. And you can hear anything on the news. You can read anything in the paper. God is still in control. And always will be.